Yeah. Doing good? You guys yeah. down there too? Yeah. All right. Well, I'm Dan Geddes, and I want you to know that I'm an American, and I'm really, really proud to be an American. You know, I feel like we export the best culture in the world. Hollywood movies are the envy of the entire world. Don't you think so? Don't you love them? Yeah. And next week are the Academy Awards, and they're going to pick the Oscar for Best Picture. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I think I know which movie is going to be chosen for Best Picture, the movie that best exemplifies our American values. And that is... American Sniper. American Sniper, exactly. That's right. Where else can you get a movie about a guy that kills 200 people, 160 of them confirm kills? This is really, you know, this is really what we're all about. And they got that guy who was voted the sexiest man alive. What was his name? He's, the, he's playing the American Sniper. So Hollywood really wants you to like him. And they got Clint Eastwood. They got Clint Eastwood. He was Dirty Harry, you know. And in Dirty Harry movies, he's the director of American Sniper. But Dirty Harry would kill five or ten or fifteen people in a movie. But he never won an Oscar. You know, he needed to kill a lot more to do that. And uh, the, the, I saw the trailer, and the, the movie is much more about, uh, it's not really bothered about all the people that, that get killed in it. It's much more about how conflicted he is that he doesn't have enough time to spend with his family. <laughs> but anyway, um, I've been here a long time, but I still don't understand Dutch politics, because you have, what, 16 or 17 million people, and then you have 16 or 17 political parties? <laughs> or it's 70, even? And they combine in these weird, like, weird DNA combinations, recombinant coalitions that last for, like, six months or a year, and then they just fall apart like a bad mutation, you know? I I've never understood it. I have a much greater grasp of American politics, you know? We have 310 million people and only two political parties. <laughs> so it's very simple to understand, and they're both for the same things. They're both for war and corporate profit. <laughs> uh, thanks very much. to have such a nice turnout after a Valentine's Day. Did anyone celebrate Valentine's Day? Yeah. Even more people. You saw Fifty Shades of Grey. You saw Fifty Shades of Grey. Wow. Did you? <laughs> yeah, but it's, I thought it got, it got pretty bad reviews, actually, Fifty Shades of Grey. I did read one fan online who said, um, well, I, yeah, it, the, the, the acting was very bad. They made very bad uh, uh, casting choices. It was just very painful and torturous to watch. Uh, in other words, I had a great time. <laughs> it was a review of a book, yeah. book fan. Okay, anyway. Um, oh, and something else happened yesterday. It was very sad news. Uh, the inventor of uh, the, uh, what's it called? <coughs> Nutella died. Nutella, do you know that? The sand walnut sandwich bread, or is it hazelnut? Yeah, sad, right? Yeah. yeah. Just looking for emotional reactions here. It's sad, isn't it? Yeah, it's very sad. Yeah. <laughs> Nutella. Yeah. It's from uh, the the it's, the guy was named Michele Ferrero. It's an Italian guy. Are you guys discussing this amongst yourselves now? Or people are explaining Nutella to each other. <laughs> but it's it's sad. The guy was 86 years old. <laughs> And his company also came up with the uh, Ferrier Rocher, the uh, little bonbons, and with uh, the Kinder Surprise eggs, actually. So, uh, yeah, he did a lot for the world. And on Wednesday, they are going to uh, disassemble him and put him in a yellow plastic <laughs> coffin. And uh, he will be covered in delicious milk chocolate. So, it will be a very nice ceremony. Anyways. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Good, good. I'm good. Thanks for asking. Um, so I wanted to start by telling you about something I saw yesterday. I was walking along one of the millions of canals here, and I came across two swans who were in the middle of a fight, like really going at it, like sudden death, death match style, just like kicking each other's butts. And I don't know if you've ever seen a swan fight, but it's basically just two necks like flailing at each other. You know, it's like those inflatable two men just knocking at each other, but then with a vengeance. <laughs> the fight was getting more and more intense, so this crowd started gathering around, and everybody's like Snapchatting and tweeting about it, you know, like hashtag swan fight, hashtag two swans don't make a right. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. 
Um, but eventually, this woman goes up to a nearby tree, snaps off a branch, and starts bashing it against the canal to break up this fight so they don't actually kill each other because it was headed that way. Um, and the swan that was losing just kind of swims away, like with his head down, being like, I'll get that bastard later. And the other swan swims over to what is clearly his swan girlfriend, and she's like stroking him and giving him little kisses. And going like, oh, you're so brave, like, thanks for fighting for me. Because my theory is that was a love triangle that had a massive fallout and will soon be on Animal Planet Jerry Springer. <laughs> I also live alone now for the first time. I don't have roommates. Pretty new, pretty different. And living alone is also making me have to grow up a bit, like, take on new responsibility, act like an adult. I'm not good at that. I don't know how to take care of myself. I'm at the age where all of my friends are getting married and having kids. My Facebook feed is just mostly wedding albums and ultrasounds. And I still have to put up my fingers to figure out which way is left. Like that. <laughs> um, but I did actually, I've been diagnosed with anxiety and social anxiety since I was about 15. And it comes with panic attacks, which aren't fun. But my Dutch side does appreciate a good two for one deal. So, if you've, never, if you've never had a panic attack, by the way, it's, it's when your body reverts to its instinctive fight or flight mode, which is great if you're being chased by a bear and it's the Middle Ages, not so great if you're trying to chat someone up. So recently I had a panic attack when I was talking to someone I was interested in, and my body just immediately goes, They said, hi, how are you? That's terrible. Um, and I just remember thinking, like, well, running away would be rude. Guess I have to fight this person. <laughs> and that really is not a good start to a relationship. But um, I guess here I could just stick them next to a canal, kick them in, and let the swans go at it. So, all right, that's it for me, guys. Thanks.